John Allison IV is the former chairman and CEO of BB&T, the nation's 10th largest bank. He believes that it is a mathematical certainty that the United States government will go bankrupt if it continues on its current financial course. In an interview with CNS News last week, Allison said, if you run the numbers, in 20 or 25 years, the United States goes bankrupt. It's a mathematical certainty. As you'll see in the rest of this report, I believe he's a little optimistic there. Allison made his comments shortly after the Federal Reserve announced it was creating between $600 billion and $1 trillion out of thin air for use in purchasing our own debt from ourselves. The policy is called QE2. No, not the famous luxury ocean liner. QE2 is Wall Street shorthand for quantitative easing second round, which is itself a euphemism for institutionalized theft. Here's how it works. The government issues treasury bills and bonds, which are really IOUs, or instruments of debt, upon which the government pays interest. Theoretically, the Fed keeps inflation low by reducing how much it pays out in interest. Eventually, the interest falls to the level where it fails to attract new investors. Quantitative easing is when the Federal Reserve prints money and uses it to buy up the debt that no one else is willing to buy because the interest rates are too low. That's right. The Fed buys up its own debt. I know. It sounds nuts, like using your own credit card to pay off your mortgage. The problem is, the more money the Fed prints, the less all the existing dollars are worth. Now, if the unelected Federal Reserve governors did not have the legal cover of the federal government to protect them, they would be prosecuted for using a Ponzi scheme against the American people. You and I, who are just ordinary unprotected citizens, would be thrown in jail for doing what the Fed is doing. It's like a financial strategy that suggests doubling your money by folding it in half. Why would our government and central banking system do that? Are they nuts? No, not really. Just crooked. It's expected that the $600 billion, maybe as much as a trillion, printed up by the Fed for QE2 and spent by the second quarter of 2011 will devalue the dollar by about 20 percent against the currencies of all other countries. The skyrocketing price of gold confirms that estimate. The smart money is saying the same thing. We borrowed when the dollar was higher against the currencies of investor countries. It has fallen 19 percent against the euro since June, for example. Now we pay it back with the devalued dollars our investors have to accept at face value. The Germans are furious. German finance minister Wolfgang Schauble lashed out at the policy saying QE2 would create extra problems for the world and lead to long-term dangers. China's mad too. The head of the Chinese central bank warned of QE2's negative impact on the global economy and an even greater impact on the dollar as the world's international reserve currency. One Chinese economist was quoted in Jiawa, China's state-owned news media. The economist, who specializes in American studies, summarized it this way. The U.S. was sick, but the other countries have to pay for the medicine. The United States is doing something that benefits itself at the cost of others. The problem is that nobody inside or outside the government knows for sure what the consequences, intended or unintended, might be. At some point, the Fed will have to withdraw all that newly created currency to avoid a surge in inflation and possibly zoom into hyperinflation. It isn't as if this hasn't been tried before. Germany tried it after losing World War I. They tried to pay their debts by simply printing more paper money. Here's the lesson we should learn from that history. 
In 1914, 100,000 marks in the bank meant a comfortable retirement. By 1919, five years later, it wouldn't buy a loaf of bread. By the time the Weimar Republic collapsed, it was printing billion mark notes because lower denominations were worth more as kindling for the stove. Is this our future? The final indications of Christ's soon coming are now taking place, folks. The drive toward a one-world government is in full swing. This is the last sign that had to happen. I'm going to summarize hours of Bible prophecy to seek to answer some of the vital questions this presents. My 35 CD series with a verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Revelation explains in great detail what I'm about to briefly summarize. With great personal regret, I have taught for decades that America has to fall as the world's leading power. This is because America, as the major world power, with its constitutional safeguards for our individual freedoms, has been the major obstruction that prevented the world from moving into a one-world economy and government. There has to be a major collapse of the world's economies to make way for this to happen. This will then set the stage for the Antichrist to be revealed. He will step forth with electrifying plans for bringing in a great new world order of peace, prosperity, and security under his global rule. His absolute power will be established when he is fatally wounded and then miraculously brought back to life by Satan's power. After this, the world will not just follow him, they will worship him. The world will be in total euphoria under his rule for three and a half years. Then the war of Armageddon will break out and the next three and a half years will bring the world to the brink of total destruction. Only the Lord Jesus Christ and his return to the earth will prevent that from happening. Now, for most important question, where do Christians fit into all of this? Well, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 gives us a precise sequence of events. The restrainer of world lawlessness, who has restrained world lawlessness from the time of the Apostle Paul until the present, has to be removed from that mission before the Antichrist can be revealed. The restrainer can only be the Holy Spirit of God. But since the Holy Spirit permanently indwells every believer in Christ, his removal must also include the removal of every Christian in whom he dwells. This removal of all living believers is called the rapture. Now, some people think that's crazy, but it is the Word of God and firmly, clearly promised. Every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ will be instantaneously snatched up to meet Christ and be changed from mortal to immortal without even experiencing physical death. Then the Antichrist will be unveiled to the Christ-rejecting world. 